You are now listening to All One Radio, the talk show podcast station. Bringing to you daily health and information. Where daily health is viewed as an ever-changing reality. All information and resources are based on the opinions of the host, unless otherwise noted. All information is intended to motivate, encourage, and inspire you to positive change and a healthier lifestyle. No information on this site should be used to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any disease or condition. Listeners are to make their own health decisions after consulting with their health care provider. This is your daily health. Hello and welcome. You are listening to All One Radio, the talk show podcast station. And this is Let's Talk Daily Health. Hopefully, you all are doing well and having a great day and feeling good. Well, today's show, we're going to cover a couple of things for health. But there's a question there we're going to cover as well. Do we own our DNA? Interesting question. Interesting topic, right? I thought so. As well as helpful health products. I've got a product to tell you about. You may have heard of it, but I'll talk about that later. And last but not least, top health news. So again, welcome. If you are new, thank you for tuning in. And for everyone who's been listening, thank you for your support and glad you are here. Now, that question, do we own our own DNA? That's not usually something that's thought about or even talked about. But it is a topic of conversation, whether you know it or not. Now, most of us don't even notice them or think of any ownership over these lost biological pieces of yourself. We just don't pay attention like that. There is so much of our DNA laying around everywhere we go, more so at home. You're just living your life. You're not worried about the scans that's coming off or anything like that. Even when you go to the doctor to have something removed or whatever the case may be. But everywhere you go, you leave your DNA. Especially doctor's offices, hospitals, things of that nature. But that's not really our main thought when we're going about our daily activities. Well, your DNA can be kept and studied depending on how long it lives and in which case begs the question is it still yours and do you have any say so to how and what it's used for in the future say i get a cyst and i go to the doctor and i get it you know removed how many of us have actually stopped and thought about what organs we've had removed and what they're really going to do with it Does anybody ever ask? I know I haven't. But that's why we're talking about this. Because the next time, God forbid I have to have surgery, I'm going to ask about what they're going to do with whatever it is they remove, If should I need something like that. But most of the time when you go in for surgery, you don't think about it. You don't ask any questions. Well, take this for example. I ran across this article about this American woman where she had cancer and so they you know of course did biopsies removed things and her name was Henrietta Lex so they named a cell line after her and it is still used for medical research today however Neither Harry, Harrietta nor any of her family members could sit it to the prolonged use of her cells. Now, 20 years after Henrietta's death, that her family was notified that while she was dead, her cells were alive. Not only that, companies, well, they're, they were mass producing her cells and distributing them across the globe for a huge profit without the family even seeing any payment. Now, I know that's got to be interesting. Okay, they removed the cells, 
So, is it considered property? Is it intellectual property? What, what, how would you really even categorize that? So, do we have cell cellular ownership? The truth is, it's hard to prove ownership or property rights of DNA after it's been extracted and it is in use. Now, the subsequent research and intellectual property derived from the cells are not yours anymore. Now, ownership comes down to knowing when your biological property is available to be legally owned by someone else and having the informed consent to share it. Now, out of all the consent forms we sign for permission to get tests done or treatment or surgery or whatever it is, we have to sign a consent form, but that's not something that's actually on that consent form. So it's, it's still very interesting. I mean, so with Harriet, they took these cells and did research on them and were able to use them. So it's almost like as long as the organ, tissue, or whatever it is, or cells, remain in your body, it's yours. But the moment it's out, it's hard to claim. And even if a company ended up with it, and like in Henrietta's case, they were mass producing her cells and distributing them across the globe and was making money off of it. So you really got to be careful and I wanted you all to know that because that's very important. That's really personal. Something being taken from you and then having the capability to be sold or something discovered and all of that part of it is not yours. You get no recognition. It, it's no longer yours. Now, moving along. Helpful health product. Now, some people may be familiar with this product and some may not, but here we go. It's called Dermaplast. It is used to reduce pain or discomfort caused by minor skin irritations, insects bites, minor burns, cuts, sunburn, and many other sources of minor pain which are on the surface of the body. Dermaplast is a first aid spray. And it also helps prevent infection in minor cuts, scrapes, and burns. So what is it exactly? Well, dermoplast is benzocaine. And it is a local anesthetic, of course, numbing medication. And it works by blocking nerve signals in your body. Now, of course, there's always a warning to it. And I'm definitely going to give that to you. The warning is, do not use der dermoplast on a child younger than two years old. Now, like mo many products, there are plenty of warnings and messages. And this one is, an overdose of benzocaine can cause fatal side effects if too much of the medication is absorbed through your skin and into your body. Use the smallest amount needed. So if you go out to the store, because it's, it's pretty much over the counter, I believe you can get that over the counter. Just be careful with it, but make sure you ask a doctor or even a pharmacist if the medicine is safe for you to use before you use it. It's always safety first, remember that guys. But it's called Dermaplast. And it, it is helpful. Now, our top health news now, we spoke already on different little research and whatnot. This one here is post-mortem brain studies. Post-mortem brain studies have revealed some interesting news. They found that the gene expression in some cells actually increased after death. Thereafter, the term being called zombie genes, researchers observed glial cells grow long arm-like appendages hours after death which actually isn't really surprising to researchers but it is to me 
Now, what is important is the implication of the discovery. Now, brain, the brain study is definitely vital to society's future health and has already aided in finding treatments to different diseases as well as disorders. Yet, it hadn't previously included postpartum, pardon me, post-mortem gene expression or cell activity. Now, researchers know which genes and cell types are stable, which degrade, and which increase over time so that the results from post-mortem brain studies can be better understood. Now, this comes from University of Illinois at Chicago, and it was originally written by Sharon Permet. But it's a very interesting story because, I mean, the brain study is important because it does help. But it's kind of weird that they're called zombie genes. And it's because the glial cells grow long arm-like appendages hours after death. So, okay. All right, I guess the name fits. What do you all think about this? And hopefully you are taking care of yourselves, loving yourselves for who you are, eating right, being kind to yourself as well as, as, well as mindful of yourself. I would like for everybody to live a long, healthy life. Till next time, be good. <laughs>